Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Multiplying Terms with Variables. This is part one. Really important skill here. It's really foundational to everything that is to come here, and that's called multiplying terms with variables, right? What does it mean? Let me just ask you a question out loud without any math, and I think you'll understand very simply what we're doing in this lesson, even without writing anything on the board. What if I asked you and I said, hey, you have three dogs, right? Three dogs in your possession. And then what would happen if I told you that you were to multiply those three dogs times two. Visually, what would happen? Let's say I had three dogs and they're on leashes, right? I have them right in front of me. One, two, three, three of them, three dogs, three D, or three dogs, right? And I multiply by two. How many dogs do you have? You have six dogs. Because you know in your mind that the three dogs is like three objects that are called dogs, right? And when I multiply by two, you know that that means I double the amount that I have. And so I should end up with six of these objects called dogs. So three, times two of these, uh, uh, or sorry, two times three of these dogs should be six dogs. That's, that's the bottom line, right? So let's take a look and see if that makes sense in terms of math. What if I give you something called two times three X? What do you do? Well, the three X, what does it represent? It's three of this thing, this X here. Think of it as an object. Think of it as a banana or a buffalo or dogs in our case. So three of these dogs means I have three of them. Right? The X means dogs, let's say in this case. But then I take these three dogs, right? Right? And I multiply by two. So what should I get? I'm going to multiply the numbers. Two times three is six. But the variable, it still has to come to the answer because I'm multiplying dogs. I have three of these dogs to begin with, and I double them by multiplying by two. So the answer I get has to be six of these dogs. See, a lot of students don't know what to do with the variable here. Why is it that this variable comes into the answer? Why is it that I just multiply the numbers together to get six, and then the variable just comes along to the answer? It's because this variable is like an object. It's like a container for something. Now in math, the container is, is the X is representing another number that we don't really know right now. But visualizing that as an object with a banana inside of it or something helps to understand in the beginning what the heck you're doing. Because when you have three times this object means I have three bananas. But then I multiply it by two, I should have six bananas. So the bottom line is that when you have a number times a term that has a coefficient, like something times a variable, what you do is you multiply the numbers, just like multiplication, and the variable just comes along for the ride. It's like a label telling you what you're talking about there. So let's crank through a few more, and I think you'll see very quickly how easy this becomes. All right, let's say we have five times 2D. Right? So what do we do? Well, this is like two dinosaurs. I have two dinosaurs in my possession, but then I multiply that amount by five. So I'm going to actually have a total of 10 dinosaurs, which is 10 times D. So in terms of math, what you're doing is you, you multiply the numbers and the letter here, it just comes along for the ride. Right? So 10 D. That's the final answer here. This is the final answer here. Notice that there isn't really much work to show here. I don't like that very much because I want you to show your steps. But here, it's like with your multiplication tables. If I ask you, what is two times two? You know the answer's four. You don't really show your work for that. 10 times two is you know something you could tell me. And you don't show your work for that. So here, th the only difference is there's just a, a letter involved. And you have to know that that letter comes into the answer. So there's not much work to show, but we're going to get it through repetition. All right, what about seven times four G? We multiply the numbers, but the variable comes along for the ride. Seven times four is 28, 28 Gs. So this means I had four golf balls, but then I multiplied that amount times seven. So now I have 28 golf balls. All right, these are gonna go really fast. What about, if I can get to the next page, what about nine times two P, right? So what do I do? I have uh, numbers multiplied, but I also have this variable. So I multiply the number, nine times two is 18, but then the P just kind of comes along for the ride into the answer. So this is like having two pennies. I have two pennies in my pocket, but then I multiply that amount times nine. Now I have 18 of these pennies. All right, what about five M times six? Now the only difference here is notice I have the term with the variable first and the number second. Whereas in all of these, I had the number first and the variable second. But you know that multiplication, it doesn't matter the order in which you do it. So 5m times 6 is exactly the same thing as 6 
times 5m. So whatever way you want to think about it, that's fine. I think that I have five monkeys in my house. This is what the 5m means, five monkeys. But then I multiply that amount times six, so I have to have 30 monkeys. Five times six is 30, and the variable again comes along for the ride, 30 monkeys, right? You can think about it any way you, you like. You can think about monkeys or dinosaurs, or you can just memorize the math, the, the rules, which is kind of what I'm trying to show you by example as well. What about 11 times five Z or five zebras. What do we do? We multiply the numbers, 11 times five, 55, and the variable just comes along for the ride. If I had five zebras, and then I multiply that amount times 11, you know, then I would have 55 of these things I'm calling zebras, and that would be the final answer. All right, let's talk about four kites times six. Four kites times six. If I actually had four kites, and then I multiply that amount times six, what would I have? Four times six would be what? 24 of these things. You can't just say the number's 24, because where do the kites go? It's 24 kites we're talking about. So six uh, times four K is 24 K. If you leave out the variable in the answer, it's wrong, because we're talking about something in specific, the object K, the variable K, the placeholder K, that's what we're talking about. So the answer's not 24, it's 24 times whatever K is, right? Let's do a couple more, and then I'll wrap it up with uh, uh, kind of a conclusion here. Let's talk about eight jelly beans uh, times seven. I start out with eight jelly beans, and then I multiply that amount by seven, so eight times seven is 56, and then J for jelly beans. J for jelly beans, so 56 J. All right, what else? <clears throat> Let's say we have 12 times five beds. I have five beds in my hotel, but then I multiply that amount by 12. So what do I do? I multiply the numbers. 12 times five is 60, and I still have B for beds. So the answer is 60B. All right, I think we only have one more, and that is going to be it. So let's say we have six times Z times seven. What is that going to be? I have six zebras. I multiply that in my amount by seven, so I multiply six times seven to get 42, and then the Z comes along because I'm talking about zebras, 42 zebras. All right, so this is how we handle multiplying. In this case, every problem was just a simple number times something that involves a variable, a number times something that involves a variable, a number times something that involves a variable. Here we flipped it around where it's something times a variable times a number something times variable times a number, because the order of multiplication doesn't, ha doesn't matter, so multiplying it this way or the reverse way, you get exactly the same thing. Now I want to close with one kind of, it's not really a, a gotcha or anything, I just want to teach you a little bit more as we get to the end of this lesson. Here we've covered the, co the content of what I really want you to know, but I also want to short, sort of prove to you that this is true here. We're saying that two times three x is six x. So let me go to a blank board, and let's write down what we just said. Two times three X is equal to six X. Now I've been doing this with, you know, buffaloes and dogs and all that. And I said, hey, you have three dogs because X represents dog, let's say. So you have three of these. And then you double it by multiplying by two. You should have now six dogs. So that's why the X is there. But I want to show you that this, this is an equation, notice. This is an equation. This equal sign means the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. And the X here, it really doesn't mean buffaloes or dogs or cats or dinosaurs or bananas or cucumbers. It doesn't really mean that. It really is a placeholder for a number. So I've been using the dinosaurs and stuff to kind of help you understand, but really it represents a number. So I want to take a minute to show you that no matter what value of X you put in here, you're going to get the same answer. And that proves to you that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same. So let's take a couple of examples. Let's say that X is equal to one. Remember, X is a, really not a buffalo, it's a number. And X might be two, or X might be five, or X might be three. What this little equation is telling you here is that no matter what value I put in for X, if I put one, or two, or three, or 10, or 5.2, or three halves, or one half, whatever number I put in, if I calculate the left and I calculate the right, I should get the same answer. Why? Because this is saying it's equal. This side is equal to the right-hand side for all values of whatever X is. And so now let's just take a few values and check. If X is equal to one, what would I have? I would have two on the left, 
times three, and this is three times x, but we're saying now that x is one. So we'll just put it in parentheses and say three times one, and this is equal question mark with on the right hand side six times x, six times one. You see, all I've done is I've said, well, if x is one, let me stick it in here. And then let me stick it in here because it's the same x. If I'm telling you it's one, let me put a one there, let me put a one there, what do I get? From the order of operations, this is just two times three times one. The parentheses don't really matter here because there's nothing inside. So it's two times three is six. And then th this six times the one is also six. So I have a six. On the right hand side, six times one is six, check. So that's the same thing. So when I put a value of one in here and in here, then I calculate a left hand side of six and I calculate a right hand side of six. So that means that for this value of x, this is, th this is the same thing. Now let's take a couple other values real quick. Let's say that x is equal to two, right? Then I would put in two for x, two times three times two. All I did was put a two in there and then six times two on the right hand side, put a two in there for there. But notice this is all multiplied. This is two times three times two. So two times three is six. And then the six times the two is 12. And six times two also here is 12 and it's checked because the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. You see what I'm saying? I just picked two random values of x and I showed you that when I put this value into the left and the right, it does show that this side is equal to the right hand side. And then when I pick a totally different value of x and calculate it, the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. We can keep going until the heat death of the universe, but if I keep picking values of x, you're going to see that no matter what value I pick, the left hand side is going to be equal to the right hand side. What does that tell us? It tells us that if we can pick random values, if we could pick all the values and prove to ourselves that the left hand side, once we calculate it, and the right hand side, once we calculate it, are the same answer, no matter what value of x we put in, what it means is that this left hand side is actually equal to this right hand side, no matter the value of x. So I just wanted to circle back around and kind of prove to you more mathematically that this really is true for all values of x. And this really is true for all values of k. And this really is true for all values of j. And this really is true for all values of m. So when I multiply and I get an answer, what I'm saying is that this is exactly equivalent to the expression we have on the other side for any value of m you give me. That's why I can put an equal sign there. So it's helpful in the beginning to think of five monkeys times two or three bananas times two, but really the variable represents a number. And when you put numbers in, you can convince yourself that the left and the right hand side really are equal. And that's really all I was trying to show you here at the end. So I'd like you to go back through the beginning of this uh, lesson, solve all of these yourself, maybe pick a few different uh, var values of, of x, and maybe for some of the other problems also, try a few values and show yourself that they really are equivalent no matter what you do. And then follow me on the part two, we'll get a little more practice with multiplying terms with variables.